Welcome back to Replay Mondays. This week's Replay Monday video is your identity is in Christ. Let's get ready for an amazing word from the Lord. Grab your coffee, grab something to write on, and let's watch Replay Monday. Everything is going to be all right. And how do I know that everything is going to be all right? I know that everything is going to be all right because the word of God says that everything is going to be all right. That's what the word tells us. Everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be. That's a guaranteed promise in the word. That's, that's a guaranteed promise in the word. If you have been living anything less, expecting anything less, then your life to be all right, I'm telling you, you've been living less than what you're supposed to. And so today, I titled this Your Identity in Christ. Today, I'm hoping that you're going to capture the image of who you are in Christ Jesus so that you can walk in the fullness of who God called you to be. The only reason, the only reason you receive an alternative to who God calls you to be is because you don't know who you are in Christ. You don't know. You don't know that it's unconditional. You don't have a, a real perspective. And so anytime the enemy can throw you off by presenting an alternative to the lifestyle that God wanted you to live. And so you live kind of subpar or mediocre. It's easy for you to become very complacent. You accept things and attribute them to be a part of your personality and they're not even who you are. And so I'm telling you that um, who you are in Christ Jesus is way better than what you've imagined. So your identity is in Christ. And I'm going to read some scriptures to you out of Ephesians. And then I'm going to show you a few other things so that you get firm in your identity of Christ. The very first thing I need you to understand, and I've been saying this a whole lot lately, is God's love is unconditional. So stop working off that point system. Stop working off that point system that if I do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, then God and I are all good. God's love is unconditional. He loves you. He is reckless for you. He will come after you. He believes in you. He created you. God has already prearranged you. That's my first thing to you this morning. God has already prearranged you for a good life. I promise he has. He's already prearranged you for a good life. So we go to Ephesians 1 and 5. It says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Christ Jesus. This is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belongs to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of son and forgave our sins. He showered, her, showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious plan regarding Christ, a plan to fulfill his own good pleasure. At this and in this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. That's your inheritance. God loves you. He's already prearranged this. And I know some of y'all are like, but I have been through some stuff. Are you telling me even the stuff that I've been through? I promise you, I promise you, I'm a firm believer in Romans 8, 28. Uh, I wanted it tattooed on my side. All things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. Like I'm telling you, it's already working out for your good. It's already, it's already prearranged. Some of the things that you've experienced, some of the things you've been, been through, I know some of those things don't make sense. I know some of those things are consuming. I know some of those things are work, overwhelming, but I'm telling you, he's working it out. He's purging you. He's purifying you. Patience is doing a greater work in you. But you have to know that who you are, that your identity is already in Christ. Romans 8, 29, 38, 30 says, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image. That's why you got to be solid that your image of who you are. So you got to see yourself from God's perspective. 
The only way you're going to look at life differently or from a different perspective is because you don't have the image of who God show me. Some of y'all just need to simply say, Lord, show me, like, show me you, show me me in you, show me what I look like in you, show me how you design me. Not what my mom and them said, not how people talked about me, not based on the mistakes I made. Show me you so that I can see this. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, before I knew you, I formed you in the womb. Like before I knew you, I already formed you in the womb. So he's already, he already saw you. He already knew when you was going to lie. He already knew when you were going to mess up. He already knew when you were going to do something you ain't got no business. He knew who, he knew you was going to sleep with whoever you slept with. He knew that you was going to steal. He knew, he already knew that. But until conditionally he loves you anyway and so you got to understand that there's nothing that you can hide from God a lot of times we don't come into the presence we don't walk into our true identity because we're hiding from God and you cannot hide from God I want to read this to you. This is Psalms 139. It says, Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know, when I sit down or stand up, you know, my thoughts, even when I'm far away, you see me when I travel and when I rest at home, you know, everything I do, you know what I'm going to say. Even before I say it, Lord, you go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day How had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't account. You got to read that over yourself every day. You got to remind yourself every day. This is how precious I am to God. Like you got to read. You got to fight what you've been taught so that you can walk into the fullness of what you've been called to be. Like you're going to have to fight it because a lot of what you see and a lot of what you do and a lot of what you have believed has been based on lies. That's my second point to you. Stop believing the God lies that God doesn't know you or he didn't purpose you. He did. Ask yourself, what lies have I believed about myself or my situation? What lies have I believed? What lies have I been telling myself? What lies have I bought into? What have I said about my faith? Have I just left my faith of who I am just at the, this is it, no more? You've been believing so many different lies about yourself that you can't even receive the newness that comes when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Can I share something with you personally? I got baptized when I was eight years old. But I really didn't understand the baptism. I really didn't understand what my salvation went, meant. And so when I was 26 or 27, I went back in the water again. And I went back in the water again so that I could renew uh, my relationship with Christ. And I, could, I, I finally understood what the baptism was for. And so I went back into the water again as a fresh start, as a renewal, so that God knew and could understand that I knew exactly where we were in this relationship. It's the same thing as I went into the water and came out of the water as a refreshing or a renewing. It's the same thing that you got to do with this word. You got to get the mind of Christ Jesus in you so that you can be refreshed. That's why it says Romans, do not be conformed to the things of this world. Renew your mind to the word of God. You have got to figure out who your identity is, Christ. The only reason some of you have been living subpar is because you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. Your identity has not been made known to you. And you're not even asking God to make you 
make your identity known to you. And so instead of you walking into Psalms 139, understanding who your identity is, understanding who Christ created you to be, Ephesians 1 and 10 says, and this is the plan at the right time. He will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, Christ in heaven. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance for God for he chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to his plan. He worked, he, God's purpose was that we Jews who were first, the first to trust in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. And now you, us, the Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised. That's why you got to spend this more time in your word, more time with the Holy Spirit. I wrote some notes this morning, um, reading and just studying on when our identity has been shifted. And I taught, um, I taught a series uh, when I first started Coffee and Conversations. I think you can only find it on YouTube. It's called an identity crisis, and it helps you identify when your identity is not rooted in Christ and your identity is rooted in other things. Because I'm gonna tell you something: if you don't understand this part about yourself, then the church. Because remember, we're the church. The church is gonna be so jacked up because most of us don't understand who we are. We don't understand. And so even though we've received the baptism and even though we're saved, we still controlling, we still manipulate, we're still angry, we're still critical, we're still negative, we're still overbearing, we're still judgmental. Born again, but without identity. Born again without, without identity. That's why I went back in the water because I needed to confirm for myself that I understood that my new identity was in Christ. I didn't get that when I got baptized at eight. I got that when I came out the water at 26, turned to 27. When I came back out that water, I understood then that this was my new identity and this is where I was in Christ. If you find yourself operating in things of the flesh, it's because you haven't you haven't really understood who your Christ identity is. Now, your flesh is going to rise up. Your flesh is going to rise up. You're going to experience some situations where your flesh is going to rise up. But I'm saying to you, when your identity is in Christ, you're going to be able to capture those things and put those things by in, perspe in perspective. Why? Because you have enough word in you. You got enough word in you that says, ah, I'm, a, I'm out of alignment. Goals. Can I share something with y'all? Goals become ways of escape. So if you believe you're accomplishing more, then a goal becomes your way of escape. And if you're using a goal as a way of escape, you'll think that you're successful in this world based on this world's standard, but you still not aligned with the identity of who God called you to be. So then we become confused. Um, and because we can check off our little list that these goals have been accomplished, we think that we're successful because we've reached these things and we're still so far removed from who God called us to be. That's why you'll see people um, later in life, this hair this morning, that's why, I, that's why you'll see people who later in life start a career over. They'll start a career over. And one of the reasons that they'll start the career or start over is because they don't really know who they are. I know that this is deep this morning, but if you ask the Lord to show you this, if you ask the Lord to show me where the scales have been on my eyes so that I can receive my true identity in Christ, then God will show you his measure of success according to the word. It says, furthermore, because we are uni uni united with Christ, we have received an inheritance for God, for he chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to his plan. And I told you that, giving you Holy Spirit. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised, that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. God is not going to withhold stuff from you, not going to let you tap, not tap into your purpose and who he called you to be, because it would not allow him to get the glory out of your life. He created you so that you could glorify him 
in every arena he called you to. Yep, God's plan. That's good, Rodney. God's plan. Drake's song, God's plan. You got to understand God's plan for you. You got to understand what he's called you to be. You got to understand that it's a greater, bigger picture. And so if you're still controlling, if you've been saved, you've received salvation, you still bitter, you still controlling, you still manipulative, you still angry, you still critical, you still negative, you still judgmental, you still overbearing, then you don't know your identity in Christ and you can't understand God's you don't even know God's plan for you. You you should not if you're in your word in your time with God those should not be the fruits of what we're seeing without the exception that you don't really know who I was. When I understood that God's love was unconditional for me, it was easier for me to draw him, draw closer. The closer that I became to him, the more I began to see my identity in Christ, the less of Lakeisha began to filter away. So the more I study the word, the more the word purifies me, the more I begin to reflect Christ. That's why I'm emphasizing to y'all that your study life has got to be at a completely different level. That's why I'm saying to you, prayer life has got to be at a completely different level. Y'all ready to go up? Y'all ready to go up to new levels? Y'all ready to go up to new heights? Y'all ready to see God work and do what he comes? Some of y'all got some dreams and visions buried so deep in you. Some of y'all got some dreams and visions buried so deep in you that you haven't even tapped into the full potential of who you are. And so the enemy keeps presenting or putting forces in your way. And you think that that's all. That's it. You think that's it. You think you've arrived to it. And once you get there, it seems like a block or something is keeping you from walking into the next level of what you're supposed to walk into. Well, the, the hindrance is based on your identity. The hindrance is based on your identity. The hindrance is based on, you think it's still based on your point system. You think it's still got to work. Do you know God will do what he needs to do for you regardless? Like he'll do what he needs to do for you regardless. But for you to experience the next level of what, you're going to have to get firm in your identity so that you don't receive an alternative. That's, that's why stuff keeps happening. The stuff that's happening is not happening. It's because, first of all, you need to pass these little tests. You need to get rooted in the word. The stuff that's happening is keeping you from so that you don't know who you are. That, that's the, the, it, the enemy does not want you to know you have spiritual authority. He does not want you to know you're God's righteousness. He does not want you to know that you can be healed. He does not want you to know that you can walk in a debt-free life. He does not want you to know that you can have prosperity. He does not want you to know that when you sin and you mess up, you get to start over and that the Lord really forgives you of your sins and that the Lord really doesn't hold it. He doesn't want you to grasp that concept. He don't want you to have healthy relationships. That's why some of y'all still at strife and strife with people and y'all can't have good, healthy relationships. He don't want you to have healthy relationships. He don't want you to have those healthy, healthy relationships and experience those things because he knows anytime you experience what he designed for you, you're going to level up. Do you know that there are people that you are supposed to be connected to that are connected to your destiny? I call them divine accelerators that when you tap into these people, everything in your life going to take off. Everything, they've got what you need, even if they're just your intercessor, even if they're your prayer partner. That's why God is, against, that's why the enemy is against marriage. That's why he is against, um, he comes in, he don't want your kids tapped. He don't want you to have a good relationship with your kids. See, you got to see the assignment for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. You got to see the assignment. He doesn't want your kingdom operating in wholeness. He don't want your kingdom operating in wholeness. So he'll do whatever he has to do to keep your kingdom that's physically, spiritually, mentally from operating in wholeness. He, he, don't want you, he didn't want you to get this information today. He didn't want you to know God already had a plan for you. He didn't want you to know that um, God fore, foreknew you, that he preordained you, that he predestined you. He does not want you to have his identity in Christ. But if you will take it, Find out your identity. Receive his redemptive love that loves you no matter what. You'll begin to evolve into everything. This society switches up too much for you to put your trust 
and dependency in what this world and other people say that you're supposed to be. They, 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 it's too unstable. It's too unstable. Um, when I was growing up, skinny girls was in. Now thick girls is in. I'm just telling you. It's too, this society is too unstable. One minute, big booties is the thing. One minute, no booties. I'm just telling you. Full lips, no lips. Um, this society is too unstable. Natural hair, straight hair. This society is too unstable for you to put your trust of what you're supposed to be in this society. People are too unstable. People would be cool with you today. I done seen it. People I love, I done seen it. I have people they cool with you today. Cool, y'all. Y'all cool. Y'all in one space. They shift. Y'all ain't cool no more. Those relationships can't be the defining factor because God is consistent and forever stable. God is consistent and forever stable. But if he can get you out of place, man, if he can get you, I'm telling you, Alexis, that's why your identity got to be in him. Your identity can't be attached to pe your job. You might think your job is it. And then tomorrow your job could be gone. So if your identity is in your job, that's why he says don't have no idol. That's why he says don't have no other God before me. That's why he says don't place nothing else. Don't put nothing else in the position of me. Because if you place anything else in the position of me, when those things are taken away from you, when those things are taken away from you, what will you do? How will you, how will you respond? Will you withdraw or will you keep on moving? When people shift in and out of your life, what's going to happen? I done seen it. I done seen it. I done had some relationships I done thought was solid. Like that I thought was solid. And I done had people just, just switch up. Like just switch the game up. And not, that, not because I did something. Just switch the game up because of the things that they were going through in their life. And so if my identity was attached to that relationship, when the game gets switched, then I feel like I've done something wrong and I start compromising myself. This is how people stay tied into wrong relationships for a long time. I'll start compromising myself. I can do a whole thing on dating. I, I'll start compromising myself in order to be in position in that person's life because I'm trying to get them for, to fulfill something in my life that they never were supposed to feel. Anytime, anytime that you feel insecurity, you need to draw to the word because the, uh, the, the security that you need is only going to come from God. The security that you need is only going to come from God. That's why this world wants you dependent upon them. That's why I want, it's nothing wrong with fashion. It's nothing wrong with what you see is beautiful. It's nothing wrong with being beautiful. It's nothing wrong with being handsome. It's nothing wrong with keeping yourself up. It's nothing wrong with that. But all I'm telling you is when your identity is so solid, when your identity is solid, when sweet people switch the game up on you, man, you ain't you ain't gotta you ain't gotta worry about what people say what people say to you. When I change my hair, there'll be people that'll start posting, I don't like your hair straight. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, straight hair. I mean, I don't I don't like your hair curly. Okay, well, good. That's fine. But my identity is so sold in Christ that when I'm changing my hair, I'm changing my hair because I like to change my hair. I mean, I'm just being real. Like I'm, I like to. So you have to have your identity so solid, so that when people switch the game up on you, you're not moved. You're not moved by anything that God has said about you. Like they, that, you're not moved by that, and you're only steadfast in your identity in Christ. So you, the only way you're gonna have this identity in Christ is that you become more familiar with who God is and what God said about you. Please stay tuned for this week's announcements. Don't forget to join us this week. We have the devotional Tuesday through Friday at 6 a.m., Ladies Bible Study Tuesday at 7 p.m., and the Saturday morning prayer call at 7 a.m. Hope to see you there. Lakeisha M. Johnson, also known as LMJ, is an evangelist, teacher, entrepreneur, mentor, author, trainer, and community advocate. She is the founder of LMJ Ministries and CEO of LMJ Inc., a printing, publishing, and consulting firm. Lakeisha self-published her first book in April 2019, entitled The Launch, a book for anyone who wants to start anything. She is the host of Coffee and Conversations, a digital interactive daily devotional on 11 podcast outlets, including Apple Podcasts, 
with Google Podcast, Facebook Live, YouTube, and Instagram. She's been heard in over 40 countries. She is the creator and host for Pillow Talk, an exclusive event created by women, especially for women. Lakeisha is mission-minded. She is focused on serving God by serving others. If you had to describe her in one word, it would be tenacious. Lakeisha believes in order to impact our communities and make significant impact, a person should be actively engaged in service and or entrepreneurship and love. Lakeisha's famous quote is, go be loved today. Ladies and gentlemen, Lakeisha M. Johnson.